Well, good evening. It's Wednesday night. Time for our weekly recharge. Uh, it is the last day of March. Can you believe it? Um, spring is here. I think we're in the middle of red bud winter. They're expecting a freeze tonight. Uh, so after beautiful 75 degree day yesterday, uh, we jumped back into a very chilly and brisk day today. And it uh, looks like it's probably going to be even cooler tomorrow. So uh, you never know what the weather's going to do this time of year, but we do know that the seasons are under the control of one person, right? Uh, we don't hold that thermostat, but God does. And uh, we know that uh, the warmer weather is right around the corner and uh, things are blooming outside. If you have plants and things already outside, you might want to get them covered up or brought in tonight uh, and, and the next couple nights, I believe, as the temperatures are supposed to freeze. Uh, so we're being down around freezing. Um, so uh, what a uh, what a blessed week we've had this week. What a wonderful um, time we had Sunday together. It was very exciting to get to celebrate together, worship together uh, as we celebrated Palm Sunday. Uh, make sure tonight that, and as you watch, even if it's not tonight, and later on as you watch this video, to comment, let us know that you're there. Let us know where you're watching from, especially if you're not in Owensboro, uh, so that uh, we can track that and just kind of keep up with who's watching and who's learning with us. Uh, I want you to know something. I had a note this week from a couple of individuals that said uh, they are really enjoying these Wednesday night lessons and they were concerned uh, that we might, with us announcing that we would be back in house next week, that they may get to, they may start missing out on these lessons um, because they're learning things that they had not been taught before, things that they did not know, and uh, we are working diligently uh, to uh, make sure that that happens. Uh, at least on uh, some level, we will be live. Uh, we are looking and working to upgrade our live streaming abilities, uh, and that will make it a whole lot better for all of our services. Uh, but we've got some good things coming down the pike, and we know that God has blessed us to be able to do those things. Uh, excited this uh, this week about this coming Sunday, celebrating Resurrection Day together, and uh, some returning to some normalcy of church life, that we'll have a uh, church calendar put together again with events actually on it. We kind of dropped that last year uh, with us canceling so much. Uh, but I'm excited about us being able to return to life as we know it as the church, and I believe that uh, it will be even better now that we've learned a lot over the last year uh, about things that we've missed and things that we may have taken for granted. Um, and so as we prepare for Sunday, uh, we're excited about all the things that God is going to do Sunday as we celebrate Resurrection Day together. Uh, Dylan is excited this week. Those of you that um, may not be from the church family, that's my son who plays drums. Uh, a couple weeks ago, the praise team met for practice and Dylan sat down on the, the stool or the drum throne and uh, it broke. Uh, it was a, a lightweight one that had been bought several years ago uh, with his, I think it was with his first uh, electric set of drums that we bought him. It's been several years and it finally broke. So uh, this week we got the replacement. Actually today we got the replacement for it. It's much nicer. Uh, and also we've gotten new drum heads. Uh, it's the first time that the heads have been changed on our drums here uh, since we've gotten that set of drums about seven years ago or so. So um, Dylan is very excited uh, about getting those uh put on. He got the heads on this afternoon, got it tuned up. It sounds a lot better and he's excited about that. So we're excited about Sunday and being together again. Hey Gatlin, good to see you on here, buddy. Uh, it's been quite a while since you've been here. Um, hopefully we'll get to see you guys before too much longer. Um, so we've been studying on the uh, uh, book of Luke. We began that last week, I believe it was. And we talked about the, the kind of the introduction of the book of Luke. Uh, the book of Luke was written 
uh, by Luke himself, uh, and it was written around A.D. 60. Uh, so before, as we left off last week, we were talking about uh, the different elements of the book of Luke, things that make Luke unique to the other books, uh, the other Gospels in particular. And we're going to pick right back up there last uh, tonight. Um, the last thing that we had talked about, I think the last topic was uh, that Luke stresses God's forgiveness uh, to us. Uh, so before we jump right in, I want to ask you to pray with me tonight. Uh, we want to pray tonight for uh, Caleb Decker. Uh, many of you know Michael Decker and Ashley, good friends of ours. They've been to our church and preached before, ministered for us, and uh, they pastor Spirit Life Church over in Evansville. Uh, and Caleb has been sick this week. He's home this afternoon, recovering, uh, but uh, due to a, a severe reaction to medication, he's had a rough week, and he's just a little guy. So we want to pray for him tonight. Uh, we want to pray for those who are traveling. Uh, we've got um, a new church member who's leaving Saturday for Florida. We want to cover them in prayer as she and her family are traveling. Uh, we want to pray for others that are sick and those that are going through things within our church family. So would you do that with me before we jump right in? Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for... Uh, blessing and touching uh, each of us. We thank you tonight, God, because you are always in control, regardless of whether we even realize or acknowledge you're there. Uh, Father, we pray tonight, God, that you would continue to bless and touch Caleb. God, that you would help him to, uh, the, his body to rid uh, himself of these medications that have caused this terrible issue this week. Father, we pray, God, tonight that you would continue to bless the others in our church that are struggling, uh, those that are hurting, those that uh, may be sick this week, Father, we pray for those that have lost loved ones recently, God, that you would comfort them. And Lord, we thank you tonight, God, for your provision, uh, for vision, for giving us uh, a glimpse into our future, Father. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us to be able to pursue you most of all. And Father, again, we thank you tonight, Lord, for the ability to gather together in whatever means that we have to use at the moment. And Father, we thank you for the ability to come soon back into the house and be together again. Father, we thank you for it tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So, uh, picking back up where we left off last week, and I won't keep you too long tonight. Uh, the elements of the book, as we were talking about the book of Luke, uh, one of the elements of the book is music. You may not realize that uh, the book of Luke is a musical book, uh, more so than any of the other Gospels. Uh, it has inspired several songs, if you will. Uh, one of those is the song of the angel to Mary, found in Luke chapter 1, verses 28 through 33. Uh, and the song that came from that was Ave Maria. Uh, the song of Mary chapter 1, verses 68 through 79, uh, which uh, is also known as, uh, or the song that came from it was the Magnific Magnificat, or Magnificat, uh, which is the prayer of Mary. Um, from Luke chapter 2, verse 14, there's the song of the angels. Uh, we sing that oftentimes at Christmas times, Gloria in excelsis. Uh, from Luke chapter 2, verse 29 through 32, the song of Simeon, which is called Nuke Demetis, uh, or Now You Are Letting. And you may not have ever heard that. I haven't, uh, but I thought you might, uh, you might want to know those things. Uh, some of these songs that uh, we sing often, uh, some of the ones that we've heard, um, have not, uh, maybe you didn't know where they came from. Uh, so another uh, element of the book of Luke is the glory of God. Luke stresses praise and glory to God. Uh, did you realize that? That Luke is the gospel that begins to stress praise and glory to God. Praise to God is found in Luke chapter 2 verse 13 and verse number 20 and then in Luke 19 and verse 37. Glory to God uh, found in Luke chapter 2 verse 20 verse 5 number 25 Ver, uh, chapter 7, verse uh, 
16, chapter 13, verse 13, chapter 17, verse 15, chapter 18, verse 43, all of those mention glory to God. Uh, and then blessing God. He talks about blessing God in Luke chapter 1, verse 64, uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 28, uh, and 24, verse 53. And again, I'll put all of this in the comments afterward uh, so that you have the outline and the notes from tonight. Luke highlights joy and rejoicing. And boy, that's something we all need more of. Joy and rejoicing in Luke chapter 1, verses 14 and 44, 47. Uh, Luke chapter 6, 21 and 23. Luke chapter 10, verse 21, chapter 15, verse 23, and then 32. Luke focuses on children. Uh, he talks about, uh, tells us the story of John as a child, Jesus uh, as a child in chapters 1 and 2. He talks about babies in chapter 18, verse 15. He talks about an only son in chapter 7, verses 11 through 15. And an only child in Luke chapter 9, verse 38. An interesting point is that Luke talks about angels more than any other gospel. Uh, he talks about angels enough that he, he actually mentions them 23 times. 23 times uh, Luke mentions angels. Uh, he tells of the story of the angel appearing to Zacharias in Luke chapter 1, verses 11 through 20. Uh, the angel appearing to Mary in Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 38. Uh, the angels appearing to the shepherds, Luke chapter 2, verses 18, or 8 through 15. The angel with Christ at Gethsemane, Luke chapter 22, verse 43. The women at the well, 24, verses 4 and 5, and then verse number 23. Uh, Satan actually misuses a text on angels in Luke chapter 4, verse number 10. Angels will be part of Christ's second coming, according to Luke chapter 9, verse number 26. We learn from Luke that angels rejoice when a sinner repents, uh, according to Luke 15, verse number 10. Many of us have heard that uh, over and over that uh, the angels rejoice when we come to know Jesus or that when a sinner repents or uh, that's when the angels rejoice over what's taking place here on earth. Uh, angels carry believers to heaven according to Luke chapter 16 and verse 22. And then also according to Luke chapter 20 verses 35 through 36, believers become equal to angels when we die. And if you go back and look at that text there, uh, he is talking about how that uh, there's no male or female, there's no marriage or giving in marriage. Uh, we become equal to the angels in heaven. Now, there's a few unique features in the book of Luke that make his gospel a little different than others. All right, so what are those? Well, first of all, Luke is the only one that records the birth of John the Baptist uh, in the first chapter, verses 5 through 25. He's also the first and the only one to tell us of the birth of Jesus and Jesus' childhood in chapters 1 and 2. He records Mary's Magnificat, like I told you earlier, which is her prayer, uh, verses number 46 through 55 of chapter 1. He tells of Jesus preaching at Nazareth, chapter 4, verse 16. It's the only gospel to do this. He tells us of the Good Samaritan, chapter 10, verse 29 through 37. He tells us the story of the prodigal son, chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. He tells us the story of Zacchaeus, in Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Uh, Luke also tells us of Herod's mocking of Jesus. In chapter 23, verses 8 through 11. Then he tells the story of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Uh, chapter number 24, verses 13 through 32. It is, uh, the, the gospel of Luke, is the most comprehensive gospel 
It begins earlier than the others, with the exception of John, uh, with starting with the birth of John, and then ending at the end with the ascension of Jesus. So pretty, pretty significant book here uh, for us to take note of. This is probably the most weighty book of the New Testament that we've gotten to so far, of course, out of the three Gospels that we've looked at. Now, the contents of the book of Luke. First, there's the manhood of the Son of Man, chapter uh, 1 through 4. Uh, then his ministry picks up in chapter 4 and goes all the way to chapter 23. And finally, we see his majesty in chapter 24. The Son of Man is introduced by the angel to Mary. In chapter 1, in his birth and infancy are described. Jesus is adored by the angels in chapter 2, announced by man in chapter 3, attested by God at his baptism in chapter 3, and attacked by Satan in his temptation in chapter 4. So the contents just in the first four chapters uh, tell us a great deal about what was taking place in the life of Jesus here on earth. Next, moving on, picking up in chapter 4 and going all the way through chapter 23 is the ministry of the Son of Man. Uh, and it can be divided into three parts. First, his service in light of the cross, which was his primary ministry in Galilee to the Jews, chapter 4 through chapter 9. Next was his service on the way to the cross, his passing ministry in Judea and Perea to the Gentiles, chapters 10 through 21. This included his passion over Jerusalem, uh, chapter 19, verse 28 through 48, his presence as a prophet in Jerusalem in chapter 20, and his prediction about Jerusalem in chapter 21. This is followed by his sacrifice on the cross, chapters 22 through 23, which was introduced by the Last Supper in chapter 22, followed by his last submission to the cross, chapter 23, and his last saying from the cross in chapter 23, verse number 46. So we see Jesus go in the book of Luke all the way from uh, the beginning of John the Baptist, uh, and his birth, uh, being the forerunner of Jesus, and then Jesus being born all the way through to the end of Jesus' life here on earth, and his earthly ministry giving us a lot of details about what had taken place during that uh, 33 years. Finally, the majesty of the Son of Man, of chapter number 24, is revealed to us. Jesus was delivered for our salvation and raised again for our justification, according to Romans chapter 4, verse 25. The grave was opened for Jesus, uh, Luke 24, verses 1 through 12. The scriptures were opened by Jesus, chapter 24, verse 13 through 35. The understanding of the disciples was opened by God, according to Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 48. And finally, the heavens were opened for Jesus. Luke chapter 24, verses 49 through 53. So he tells us the complete picture here. Uh, probably more so than any of the other Gospels, Luke paints the picture uh, from beginning to end, uh, from beginning uh, of coming to earth, even the forerunner of John, and then uh, at the end, he's giving us the closing of the chapter when Jesus has been crucified, the heavens have been opened, he's been uh, ascended back into heaven, uh, and that's kind of where he leaves us, is right there at that moment, kind of a cliffhanger, uh, and then we see him pick up in the book of Acts where he left off. Now, within that, uh, within this chapter of the book that we're studying, uh, there, there was a listing of the parables of Jesus uh, and I, I did not include that in the notes tonight. Um, then there was an outline of the entire uh, book of Luke. Uh, but I did find a chart that I wanted to share with you tonight 
uh, as we're closing early tonight. Uh, but uh, this chart uh, is the six trials of Jesus. Uh, according to Scripture, we find three Jewish trials and three Roman trials. So first, the trial by Annas is found in John chapter 18, verses 12 through 14. The trial by Caiaphas is Matthew chapter 26, verses 57 through 68. And then by the Sanhedrin, uh, which is found in Matthew 27, verses 1 and 2. Then there are the Roman trials. Now understand, <clears throat> these were the priests, Annas, Caiaphas, and then the Sanhedrin, the religious group, if you will, uh, that were trying him from the Jews. Uh, then also the Roman trials. Remember the Roman Empire days. Uh, this was the ruling government at the time. Uh, he was tried by Pilate, John chapter 18, verses 28 through 38. He was tried by Herod, Luke chapter 23, verses 6 through 12. And then by Pilate again, John chapter 18, verse 39 through 19 and 6. And I thought that it was um, good timing to mention those trials as we are in the middle of Passion Week uh, and that we are moving toward quickly here uh, to Resurrection Sunday. Uh, so um, that, that's where I want to end us tonight because where we're at next is the place where we start talking about what the critics uh, would look at in the book of Luke and try to uh, pick, if you will. Uh, you guys seem to be, have been enjoying that with the other two uh, Gospels that we've looked at. So beginning next week, we'll be back in person. And uh, in person, we will begin going over those um, critical points uh, within the book of Luke. And again, we will be online as well for those that um, aren't close enough or can't make it on Wednesday night to be in-house with us. We'll be online as well. Uh, so we're looking forward to celebrating Sunday, uh, Resurrection Day, uh, the day that we remember Christ coming out of the tomb for you and I and, and the excitement uh, of that day. I don't know about you, but I get excited every year. When I was a child, I got excited about the new Easter suit and the um, Easter eggs and the family get-togethers and all of those things. Uh, but the older I get, the more excited I get, uh, knowing that he came out of that tomb for you and I. Uh, and then coming out of that tomb, showing us that he has the victory over uh, everything uh, that we're going through. He has the victory over life and death. And he holds that in his hands. So knowing that he holds life and death gives us a reason to celebrate. All we have to do is just trust in him and believe in him. So tonight I want us to pray again as we close. And again, thank you for your attention. Thank you for all that you do for the kingdom of God wherever you are. If you say, well, I don't do anything but pray then you're doing exactly what needs to be done more than anything, probably, uh, and that is praying for our nation, our communities, uh, those around us, our neighbors, our friends, uh, and that uh, God would continue to bless uh, those of us in America and those believers around the world, that God would just hold us all in his hand. So would you pray with me tonight a closing prayer, and then we'll see you this weekend. Father, we thank you again tonight for giving us the opportunity, Lord, to gather together wherever we might be tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord, for those things that you're putting in place for us. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your provision, for your mercy, for your grace. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you've not forgotten us. And Lord, wherever we are in this um, city, in this state, in this uh, United States, in any country around the world, we thank you, Lord, that you've not forgotten exactly where we are. And Lord, that you understand and you know what we're going through, Father. We pray tonight, God, that those that are hurting and those that are sick again tonight, we pray that you would heal them, you would touch them, you would comfort them. We pray for little Caleb tonight, God, again, 
that you would just continue the healing that you've started with his body. And Father, we pray tonight, God, that you would continue to bless your people and that we would not fail to bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We'll see you Sunday morning.